setter led her team to the national championship. That was Bryn Kehoe from Stanford a couple of years ago. So we'll watch the freshman as well and see how she reacts here in game two. You win game one in the NCAA tournament about 85% of the time you win the match. That's where UCLA stands right now in the driver's seat after taking the opener. And what I'm going to watch with Rachel Holloway, is she not setting the middle because she's not getting passes good enough to run the middle? Or is she just playing a little bit timid and going with the easier set, the high outside ball? I think it's a little bit of both. UCLA serving so tough. Nebraska not passing well enough for Rachel to run the middle all the time. Once again, the Huskers have been number one in the country from opening day. All the pressure, all the expectations on them to win the national championship playing here at home. Some of that pressure certainly lifted once they got this far. And now, perhaps back on them again as they fall behind in the national semis. UCLA playing very fearless and very relaxed in the opening. Spicer looking for Allie Daly. Used the block to get the point. And Beth, honestly, I'm not surprised that Nebraska Kill gave up game Daly. one to UCLA. UCLA. UCLA is a talented team. They're emotional. They're deep. While they don't Kill have experience in the deserve. tournament, they're playing with nothing to lose. And I thought Nebraska would come out tight. That's exactly what they did. Expect to see them turn it around, though. I think the light's going to turn on, and they're going to up their level of play dramatically here in game two. The discussion over whether or not uh, that was inside or outside the antenna, they will keep the point with UCLA. Uh, the serve from Sather now. Pavin tried to tip it over the block. Spicer goes back to Daly. Mancuso blocked by Merriweather. Back row. Larson with the big swing. Missed it. Point UCLA. Larson is one of the huge reasons Nebraska's gotten this far, but I think they need more from her right now. Here's the back row attack behind that white line. It's the 10-foot line. It's a tougher attack, not as high of a percentage because you pulled off the net. That's the 10th hitting error now for Nebraska in the match. Holloway, a long way to go to pull it out of the net. And again, Nebraska misses it wide. UCLA again out quickly in game two. And Sarah Pavin's timing is just a little bit off to me. She never looks like she's in perfect position to be hitting the ball. She needs to utilize her height and have better timing here. Another free ball opportunity for the Bruins. Merriweather makes Nebraska pay for the miscue. Timeout, Nebraska. Merriweather, second all time in three seasons in block. She led the nation in blocking and hitting percentage leading up to this national semifinal. That's never been done before. And she talked about her dad, Delano, a little bit. And just truly an inspiration. Delano, one of the first African-American athletes to appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated, was the first African-American academic student athlete, or not even a student athlete, student at Duke University, then went on to become a track Olympian. He had never run track until he was in medical school, was treating kids with cancer, wanted a way to, a way to relieve stress, so went out to the track with his friends, and they said, hey, you're pretty good. You should enter a track meet. The first meet he ever entered, he beat world-class Olympic athletes and then went on to set the uh, world record in the 100-meter dash. Just an amazing story. Nana actually followed her father to Duke and then transferred to UCLA. And the family certainly athletic. Her sister Fortune ran track at Stanford, now currently in medical school. Nana, one of eight first team All-Americans featured in our national semifinals. Each team that is here has two. Havin gets the point. That is her eighth kill. But again, Nebraska needs to be more balanced, more diverse. Rachel Holloway needs to set the middle and really set from pin to pin and make it tougher for UCLA to defend. Overpass, Mancuso jumped on it and a net violation against Spicer. UCLA has done a good job so far of keeping the crowd out of the match. You can sense they're getting antsy to start making some noise for the Huskers. Just waiting for the opportunity, and Pavin doesn't give them more there. And I think the way that you keep a hostile crowd like this quiet is to not let Nebraska score a string of points. Let them get one or two, but then you've got to side out and score in a hurry to just keep the crowd at bay. Stalls had it blocked. 
Good sign for Bruin fans that Katie Carter is having an impact. One of the great end blockers. Watch her on the pin. She gets over there, doesn't drift, turns and seals the court to keep Tracy Stahl's ball in play. Holder lining, serves. Cavan, back row, off the tape. Huskers catch a break there for the point. Cavan from Ontario, Canada, a member of the Canadian national team pool. Has a 4.0 in biochemistry. So getting it done on and off the court in Lincoln. And now Rachel Schwartz serves. Stahl's got a piece of it. Johnson pops back over by Nebraska. Bruins go back to Johnson. Holloway called for it. Chance for UCLA. Katie Carter couldn't find the floor. Here comes Pavin. Solid defense on both sides here tonight. Now it's the Huskers with a free ball. Holloway to Larson. Spicer to Carter. Busboom is there. Longest rally of the match. And finally the Bruins get it. Johnson sneaking behind Spicer. Spicer tried to push it into the corner. Heads up play by the sophomore setter. I just love Nellie Spicer's game and what an incredible story she is. She's one of seven kids. All seven, all six of her siblings, all seven kids have gone to college on athletic scholarships. So there's some happy parents. Well, who's happier than them? Nellie is the other first team All-American for the Bruins this year. And uh, Coach Banikowski loves to talk about her quickness and her range. We've seen her all over the floor tonight. Here she is setting up her teammates. There's the block for Nebraska. Talk about those, those Spicer kids. Well, she was a twin. Her twin brother, Charlie, played volleyball. Listen to this. Betsy played volleyball at Illinois. Matt, football at North Carolina Central. Megan, cross country and track and field at Eastern Illinois. Annie, volleyball, Virginia Tech. Tom, football. Unbelievable. <laughs> they must have had some tremendous pickup games out in the backyard in Barrington. Nebraska now within one. There's uh, Charlie Spicer. Volleyball player as well. And the twin, what, seven years younger than Betsy? Or excuse me, than, uh, than Nell? A small but very strong contingent of Bruin fans are Net here. Violation on Nebraska. Net violation on Nebraska. The same theme from game one carrying over now to game two. Nebraska, every time they Into get the close, lineup, they make the hitting error or they make the error that allows the Bruins to pull away a little bit again. Sather now with seven kills. And it's interesting to me, Beth, to watch John Cook and see how long he waits for his team to just play out of its stunk, or when he starts making substitution personnel changes to try and change the vibe. But right now, I think he's just being patient and waiting for his team to loosen up and play through their tightness. He saw just five days ago them weather the storm against Minnesota when the Gophers played unbelievably well in the first two games and then the Huskers came back to win the match and there might be the play that turns it around for them as the fans get on their feet here in Omaha. Spicer to Daly. Got it. And the crowd will sit back down and the UCLA players told me yeah this is an intimidating environment but we had a good warm-up last weekend Andy's crew played the regionals in Hawaii in front of 8,000 screaming fans Hawaii known for its great volleyball tradition as well so they really got used to the type of environment they're in tonight Holloway looking for Cooper the freshman hooking up for the point Cooper now with five kills. And that's key because Tracy Stalls hasn't been involved offensively as I think John Cook would like. So the more impact they can have out of the middle with Cooper will help the Huskers. Spicer with the back set for Sather. And Nebraska gets the point and they take their first lead of the match. Merrill
Weather comes right back for the Bruins. Oh, about that hang time. Spicer can just float that ball up like a balloon, and Merriweather just keeps going up to get it. Watch the great hang time. This is such a high ball, and Merriweather just waits, waits, and attacks. Holloway looking for Cavan. Big block for the Huskers, kept alive by UCLA. Holloway this time goes for Mancuso, who's long on the attack. And the Bruins grab the lead back. Tremendous toughness displayed by UCLA. Cavan. UCLA again gets just enough of it. Merriweather is rejected. Wow, another great cover by the Bruins. Cavan has it turned back. Mancuso, tough to get through the net on both sides. Popped up nicely by Lyman. Bailey can't find the floor. Back to Pavin, popped up. Merriweather, did she get a piece of it? Point for Nebraska. An incredible rally. Meanwhile, the Bruins are thinking there's a touch. Watch the hands. Great dig to keep the transition alive. That's been the key for the Bruins here in the second game. And there the ball bounces out of bounds, but I'm not so sure that Nebraska didn't touch it on the way down. That was Holloway over there. Outside the line. Tied at 14 here in game two. UCLA took the opener in impressive fashion. Air stalls now trying to come alive here in game two. Stalls has been the emotional leader for this team. Now three kills for Tracy Stalls. She needs to rally this team. She has been such a leader throughout the season, keeping them together and focused on their goal. Three-year starter, one of their co-captains this season. Cross court from Daly, avoiding the block with Stalls and Pavin both up at the net. And the UCLA lineup is Katie Carter, serving Allie Daly. Molly Daly will serve for the Bruins. Midway through game two. Yes, the service the error will give the Huskers the point. Into the Husker lineup. And serving Maggie Griffin. Just remarkable what John Cook and uh, the administration has been able to build off of what Terry Pettit started to create. Got the ball rolling. They have season tickets they've sold out matches now for the last several years 90 sellouts in a row this event sold out in under two hours the largest crowd ever to watch a college volleyball match in the united states here tonight there's an incredible tradition even when i was playing in the late 80s and early 90s we came here to play in the coliseum and it was one of the most intimidating environments thanks to terry pettit john cook has just continued that strength of program going to sting a little bit. Point for Nebraska to go back on top. Stalls looks like a completely different player here in game two. And now four kills after being held to zero kills in game one. And the difference is Rachel Holloway is actually setting her. They've got better ball control and Rachel's taking some more risks setting the tougher ball. Bailey passes to Spicer who dumps it over for the point. Kill by Nellie Spicer. Point UCLA. Spicer will serve. She has shown a knack to make all the right moves so far for UCLA. Carson passes to Holloway. She tried to dump it over. Pavin. Sarah Pavin picks up her 10th kill of the match. And I like the way Nebraska's using her out of the back row. She's one of the toughest players to block with a back row attack because you tend to go up too early when you're blocking her. Plus, she's so long and lanky. She's got great range. Nebraska by one. They're looking to even up the match with UCLA. Winner moves on to play for the Kill national championship on Saturday. Saturday. UCLA into the Bruin lineup. Second semifinal should be a Smith. battle royal with Washington, the defending national champions, taking on the Stanford Cardinal, the most successful program in college volleyball history.
Spicer looking to Daly. Holloway looking for Pavin. Spicer there defensively. Just long point for the Bruins. There are the Cardinal looking on our second semifinal. They will take on the Washington Huskies, a Pac-10 matchup. They split during the regular season. Stanford winning uh, at home in the final weekend of the regular season to win the Pac-10 championship this year. That is coming up live on ESPNU next. It will also air uh, 2 o'clock Eastern tomorrow on ESPN2. Nebraska now up by a couple. Daly. That one missed wide. Bruins are in blue. Huskers in white. Holloway setting Larson. Blocked. Point UCLA. It is critical for the Huskers to win this game too. In 50 previous national semifinals, no one has ever come from behind with an 0-2 deficit to win and move on to play for the national championship. And good news for UCLA. Nana Merriweather back into the front row. UCLA scores 65 percent of its points. When Nana's in the front row, and I think they've struggled here in game two because they haven't gotten her in the front row enough because they've gotten stalled in the rotations when she's off the court. Service error point UCLA. UCLA. Back to serve for the Bruins is Caitlin Sather. NCAA Volleyball semifinal action, Nebraska and, and UCLA, the top seed Cornhuskers essentially playing a home game here at the Quest Center in Omaha. Beth Mullins along with Heather Cox, the winner to move on to Saturday's national championship match against either Washington or Stanford. The block, Nellie Spicer, not a very weather. Point UCLA. These two familiar with one another. And the Bruins have won once in the NCAA tournament, and that was in this state, down in Lincoln, a couple of years ago. Spicer to Ali Daly. Danny Busboom digs it up. Sarah Pavin has it blocked. Jordan Larson from the back row. Daly, right at Busboom. Get set in the middle to Cooper. Point Bruins. And we have had some great long rallies, but UCLA continues to score the points in transition in the long rallies. And some very interested parties in what's going on in this match. The Washington Huskies await in their locker room. The defending national champs, who all season haven't worn their national championship rings because they don't want to defend, they want to attack the championship. Two of their key players from a year ago are back, and their setter, Courtney Thompson, and the Pac-10 Player of the Year, Crystal Morrison. They will try to lead them back to the championship kill match. Nona Merriweather. Nona Merriweather with the kill, and you in talked UCLA about it, Heather. They, they are a much better team with her in that front row. Well, she has just been so efficient in the front row. She's got eight kills, but I but what I love as well is her hitting percentage, hitting 350. It's a lot like a batting percentage. Anything above 250 is very efficient. Service wide point for UCLA, point for Nebraska. For the Huskers, Andy Banikowski prides on this team's serve and how aggressive they are without making errors. His goal, which is very lofty, is that no one on the team misses more than one serve in an entire match. They're usually pretty close nope. to that goal. Very demanding of the Bruins at the service line. That one was long, a point for UCLA, another tie here in game two. 16 hitting errors in the match now for Nebraska. And again, I think a lot of that has to do with UCLA's serve, making Nebraska's offense a little predictable. The Bruins continue to keep the crowd quiet. Looking to go up 2-0. And a stunning development in Omaha. Spicer put it back down. And two aces in a row by Colby Lyman. 
And UCLA is a different team now that Kobe Lyman's wearing that white jersey, the jersey of the Libero. 8-0 since Andy switched her position from opposite to that back row specialist. Moved back in mid-November as Nebraska gets the kill. And as Andy Banikowski said, when she is on the court all the time for us, we get great passing, we get great leadership. She's just got such a presence. And as the libero, you're really on for five rotations, and you're on the floor more than anybody else. Spicer looks to Carter. And Nebraska has a chance. Larson couldn't put it down. Point, Huskers. Jumbo squad stop clock, Jordan Larson. Tracy Stalls, point, Huskers. Stalls has come on here in game two, now has four kills, but Larson still quiet with one kill and hitting negatively in the match. She does, however, have five blocks on the night. Got a piece of that one. Boy, and UCLA is covering so well, and there definitely was a touch. Good call by the officials. Point to the Bruins. UCLA into the Bruins lineup. The crowd doesn't agree with it, but the Bruins are up one. Nelly Spicer. Tracy Stahls right now trying to reunite this team, turning and demanding so much of them right now for a side out. Larson right at Daly. Carter back to Daly. All the way. Sliding behind is Stahls. Not back over by the Bruins. Larson, another big swing and good defense by Spicer. to Spicer. Chance for UCLA and they put it away. Rachel Johnson Rachel after Johnson. two huge UCLA. digs from Spicer. Nellie Spicer is amazing. Two incredible digs and then setting out of the middle now serving, doing it all for the Bruins. Larson. Spicer calling for it. Setting Carter. Best boom covers. Pavin. Whoa. With the rocket, gets Nebraska back within one. First team to 30, must win by two. Spicer, the back set for Katie Carter. Missed it long, tied up at 28. Timeout called by UCLA. In their championship loss to Washington. She leads everybody in the kill category. Merriweather solid for UCLA, but she is out right now, and Nebraska has a game point. And this is not the rotation that the Bruins want to be in. They need Merriweather on the court in crunch time. To tie it up. Spicer, the overpass was into the net. How can you call that on game point?